why don't we move away a little bit from Nosferatu? Because we would absolutely be remiss if we didn't talk about exactly. uh, some of your earlier works. Mike and I are children of the 80s. And, you know, your work spans some of our favorite stuff. And if you're tired of talking about it, you don't have to. But for those of you listening or watching that don't know, John has worked on, as he mentioned earlier, Poltergeist 1 and 2. He's Batman Returns, Terminator, Fright Night, True Lies, Titanic, Avatar... Uh, heavy metal you mentioned these are all some of my absolute personally and yeah. literally my, some of my favorite films ghostbusters and well that's, that's what i was gonna getting. i was gonna let mike get to that one yeah. because mike has a question <laughs> because about that's yeah, yeah when i found out uh one of my one of my favorite scenes of the library scene 35th anniversary just passed yeah, yeah. i think what was it june yeah. right june, june yeah. or something like that yeah um what there's am I a big party at uh there's a big party at the studio really you know? oh wow yeah. Oh, that's 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 cool. Yeah, it's. I uh, hope you got some good is, pictures, right? Thirty-five years. Good is, videos crazy. on your phone. Yeah, Jason Reitman's the new di director of the first one of this one, and the script is re really funny. Yeah. Yeah. Are you involved in that based, one? Based on, what's that? Are you involved with that film? I, I'm a. I'm, what do they call it? I'm a, I'm a Ghostbuster tech tech advisor, some some something like that. Basically, you're consulting. They're, 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 they're going. They've been involved. filming yeah. since then. Yeah. yeah. Cool. So back to the original, uh, one of my favorite scenes is the library scenes and the shushing ghost. Mm -hmm. um, the librarian. And yeah. I, we, you know, we've found out that you've helped uh, put that all together. So um, like Chris says, as kids of the 80s and, and for you to be involved in some of our favorite shows, like what, what went on back then? Everything was so much more practical, I'm sure. Um, so what went, went into shooting those and making that library ghost and Slimer, I believe you worked on, right? And the, and, and the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man, all these things are, these are, uh, these are, this is, this is childhood. This is our childhood. It, you know? So, so uh, let's, let's see. Uh, this started when we were doing Poltergeist. Hmm. I got hired, uh, when I finished Heavy Metal. Uh, in Montreal, uh, Ivan Reitman was the producer right. of the feature, the animated feature film *Heavy Metal*, and and I, and there was a there was a friend on the production that said, you know, I'm ri oh Richard Edlin came to Mont. We did it in Montreal. Richard, I'm not Canadian, but we did it there mm -hmm. production. And uh, Richard Edlin came to the Canadian Film Board to talk about the second. Uh, I think. Empire, Empire Strikes Back. Oh. No, yeah, Empire Strikes Back. And he was talking about it, and I went up to him and I said, I really want to, you know, I'm doing this animated feature here, but I'd really like to someday work with you. And he yeah. goes, yeah, oh, I know some guys on the show. Yeah, you know, we should talk. And he was, he was serious. He was there looking for people. Oh, wow. When I got back, uh, he goes, come, you know, come down to, I think it was Columbia a lot. Um, it was Steven Spielberg's office, and Steven wow. Spielberg was there, and George Lucas was there, and I got really nervous. Wow! And uh, <laughs> it's like we're looking for somebody to head up the animation department. So I showed him the reel from Heavy Metal. He said, "Okay, come on up," you know. And wow. and I Just up there simple. to set up the animation department. And so we did uh, that production. I, I got a lot of people who had worked on Heavy Metal. One of them is Terry Wendell. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, at ILM, and then once we finished, the, the, I think what did they do the animation part of it, Poltergeist, ET, Star Trek Two, and Revenge of the Jedi, mm -hmm. Return of the Jedi, okay, yeah. Revenge the beginning. I know it used to be Revenge, right? <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, Richard gets a call. And says this guy, you know, uh, this guy Ivan Reitman just called me. He says, "Do you know you know him? You know him, right?" Went, yeah, he goes. They want to do a, a, a comedy poltergeist with the guys from Saturday Night Live. <laughs> yeah, he goes, I'm going to go meet him. So he, he, goes, he goes to Los Angeles and he says, um, this is a funny story. He said, uh, they want to do this, but they, it's got to be done in the next 10 months. Oh. So... Because we had just finished every the work at ILM, and we and basically I went down there, and uh, we set up Boss Film, with uh, from Doug Trumbull's company. R Richard joined, did a partnership with Doug Trumbull and Richard Yursich, yeah. to form. If you look at the credits, 
mm -hmm. on Ghostbusters that says EEG, Entertainment Effects Group. That was Doug Trumbull's company. Okay. But so, so to do that show, it's like, well, 10 months, we're going to have to do everything. In, well, this is pre-digital. Right. right, yeah. 1983, 84 is when we're doing this. Yeah. Um, so it's got to be guys in a suit. There's going to be, you know, a, a, a marshmallow man is going to be in a rubber suit. The, the, the uh, onion head or the green guys yeah. can be in a suit. And uh, we have to do as much in, in camera as possible. So there, um, so I started storyboarding. I did, I storyboarded to design the, the whole, all the effects in the show. Wow. wow. And, uh, and one of the transitions was the library ghost. Yeah. So I storyboarded that scene. I went, well, if it's library, she should do, she should, it wasn't in the script at the point. It's like, she should like go, shh, no, quiet. You guys are making noise. Yeah. But what I learned on Poltergeist was we shot, I shot, I shot the ghost coming down the stairs in Poltergeist. We shot that in reverse. Okay. High speed. She went past camera up. And swung up on a on a on a cable. Right. So we got to do this. We have to shoot. I have to take the storyboards, switch them around, and have the actress act everything out backwards. Oh. And then we'll print it forwards. And when you and when she's there, when she goes shush, and when she's moving the pages, the pages, her hand, the the pages are following her hand. It's really weird. You have to watch it, but it's printed. Yeah. In the, I'm gonna yeah. Now we gotta go back and see because now right. knowing that yeah 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 and and Steve Johnson made uh, you know did that sculpt and did the puppet and uh, we had the I think the only Allridge did all the costumes and and came up with this gossamer looking very floaty material. We had wind fans and yeah. Um, so that the ghost was done that way with a quick dissolve with a flash of light and she's a a puppet monster right. Um, that everybody still remembers. And I thought, uh, at the time, I didn't think it looked that great. Oh. But um, the um, the Marshmallow Man, oh, I have some props. Can I walk away for five By seconds? all means, absolutely. Now, of course. I'm in Please my office. So. Oh, look at this. Oh, one of the cop cars. Oh, my God. Oh, wow. <laughs> Miniatures from that. Wow. That is literally from the... So that's that when is... the marshmallow man was stomping through the stomping. So, Fantastic. Yeah, wow. Mark, Mark, Mark Stetson says, um, Look at that well, system. he goes, you know, the, the marshmallow man's six feet tall and, uh, the scale just, he could get these, he could buy these, they could buy these cars, uh, Mattel car, you know, at a model shop and get a, a toy, toy store. Right. And we'll make a bunch of these and everything because we can buy these at this scale, fixed right, scale. Yeah. And they the, they still blink. There's batteries in here. Um, wow. But they were pulled on little wires and little. Uh, uh, and awesome. when we had the guy, uh, our guy in the suit, walking, um, I think we ended up with 72 frames a second. So he he was like fairly Sorry, had some weight to him. Yeah. And. Whenever we started running film and he's, you know, roll camera and he, he would walk on the set, miniaturized set, um, everybody would go three, two, one, and the, everybody would yank these little wires and pull, all the cars would move. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where they go. And then somewhere in there is three seconds of, of a shot. Um, it's kind of how that one was done. And I, went, I remember that Ivan Reitman was very nervous when he first saw it because he goes, Hi, this is the end of the movie. I got all the stuff is riding on this thing, and I, I, yeah. I don't know if it works. I went, oh, it's fun. I, I think it's funny. I mean, <laughs> he basically did the eight of us that would watch dailies every day um, of this stuff. We all thought it was funny. I was like, yeah. God, you know, we're kind of making a movie for people in this room. There's also this guy. Mm -hmm. Yeah. With his hot dog, yeah. Yep. This guy. This is the, how big he was. When he's going around the the lamp in the ceiling in the in the hotel, yeah, it was on the animation stand, and we had a little gimbal and it would spin or oh, spin this guy around, so God. he would be flying around the. <laughs> wow, that's so good. And was, of course, there was a. We did it every way possible. In yeah, got to do it in camera. We can't we can't get the guy in a suit up in the ceiling from that angle swinging mm -hmm. around. So we'll make a little tiny little little, little Mac up. Yeah, um, but there was a. Uh, Mark Brian Wilson and uh, 
was in the suit. And then when we did uh, did our green guy, we called we called him the Onion Head. And and uh, again, he was in a suit, standing on a bl- against black. And we would de- we we'd do it, you know, dissolve just an Im- we'd get enough image of him against black, so he'd be transparent when he was optically composited yeah. into all those shots. Yeah. Um, kind of how that was done. Even uh, I'm trying to remember. We, every, you, you got any other questions about Ghostbusters? But, I mean, we can go on forever. We could go on. Yeah, I we mean, could. I mean, we could literally. We could do a whole show just on. <laughs> anyway, on the show. It's in production right now. Yeah. yeah. And it's going to be really funny. I I can't wait. I was. I know the original cast, right? Yeah, the original, the original cast, and, and 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 Ivan's son is is he wrote it right? And he's, he's wrote and directed. Record. It's I, oh, I, I see. Okay. It's got the some uh, one of the kids so from now, Stranger so the, Things. The, with the girls, the the female. Ghostbusters. That that the, has nothing to do with no. This, this is no. Oh, this is this, this script follows script one. Okay. Mm-hmm. Oh, see, I didn't and uh, and everybody's connected from that. Yeah. Okay. This is an actual sequel. This is the actual sequel. It's an actual too. sequel. Yeah. 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 And it it, it 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 includes elements of two. Fantastic. But yeah. mostly one. And and it's I I would you know it's been a while since I, I sat in a room but said you can read the script you have to sit here in the office. Yeah. And I was laughing, you know. I said, "Okay, I'm just." I said, "I know." I said seven times from the script. Yeah. I can visualize what's supposed to be there. <laughs> right. Of course. Yeah. yeah that's, that's what you do. Yeah. That's fantastic. I mean, yeah, no, again, we awesome. could. I mean, we, yeah, we, we got a couple more things because, uh, you know, I, I would not want to miss the chance to point out that, that little... you have you have a um, off to your right. There's a little <laughs> a little uh, statue. Um, that's yeah. That's from the abyss. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> You won an Oscar for The Abyss, which was, uh, again, everyone watching, listening, if you haven't realized, John's worked on some of the most influential and and pivotal points in visual effects history, some of these films that he's that he's worked on. So, you know, The Abyss obviously was one of the first, you know, major motion pictures where a digital uh, being was created in 3D and... And, and 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 you know, and just the scope of it under it yeah. was like nothing. Well, never it was seen the, anything it was like the first that. ever, right? It was the first ever. Yeah. Well, well, first six, six, I think successful yeah. one. And, and <laughs> having right, and having the character as you know as big as the character was, front stage, yeah. and, and you know, be one of the characters. But yeah, you want an Oscar? For the, tell us, tell us a little bit about that. How was it like to work on that yeah. film? Well, the abyss. Um, I had. Uh, where did I, I met Jim. Uh, here we go. I, I, I went to, I met him at an Aliens, the pr- premiere of Aliens. Okay. Cameron. And he says, oh, you know, you, you did Ghostbusters. You're the, you know, you're a big fan. And he has, yeah. you know, Sigourney Weaver. I worked with her. And, uh, and we, we were going to the Tokyo Film Festival. I was going, and then he was invited to the Tokyo Film Festival. We were both going. So I said, well, I guess I'll see you there. So when we went to went to Tokyo, we sort of really hit it off together. I think uh, Stan Winston was there. They were talking about aliens. I was talking about Poltergeist 2, I think, at the show. And he says, look, I got this thing coming up. Um, I'd like to talk to you about it. You think you can help me get some illustrations and painting stuff? And it wasn't, it wasn't a go yet, but it was... You know, well, like, what do you? It's, it's what he wanted to do next. This thing yeah. called the abyss, and um, so from from his from an outline, we we uh, I had Mich- it was Michelle Mullen from from Boston. We did four or five uh, paintings and uh, illustrations, uh, color that he used to help sell the project. Yeah, and yeah. and then immediately we got to work on the lot, uh, storyboarding and designing this thing. And uh, it just sort of sort of worked out. I, I think we had 340 something shots, and there were every way possible: physical effects, big big props, full size sets, models, miniatures. And we and that was the first show that was broken up in order to to meet the schedule and the deadline of it, the scale of it. We broke it uh, the first time. I'll, I'll, up, up until that point, all visual effects were done by one company. It was either Boss Film, ILM, uh, Apogee. Mm-hmm. Uh, a, one company did an entire movie, 
Right. This is the history up until that point of Hollywood. Yeah. And uh, the, look, the, like we could we could take like the the search of the Montana one sequence and we give this to one place because right. they can work on all of that immediately, and then we can take. Um, you know what? What uh, interior like the water tentacles? One of one one facility can do that, and they can start now, and they can work the whole time just on that. They can work the whole time just right, on that. Yeah, yeah. one oh, thing sense. at a time. Yeah, it makes sense. And we ended up breaking the show up into seven facilities, and a lot of it was miniature models and miniatures. And right. we took a full size, forty um, two foot ship model uh, ship miniature of, of the Benthic Explorer out into the ocean the film ocean scenes yeah and um the underwater let's see then there was the the search for the montana that was on a stage that that, that was a 60 foot model wow uh diorama with a with cameras and and, and a, a rig in the ceiling on motion control rig that moves these move, move these submarines along the deck along uh, of the ship and, and it was a smoke filled room um, with cameras inside projecting back the images of who's in the submarines. Oh, that's so cool. It was very complicated. And, and, uh, and then the water, we call it the water pseudopod. We didn't know how we we're going to do that really. Yeah. Wow. Everybody had, a, everybody had some sort of a digital something, yeah. all the facilities studios that was the, it was like building right we're gonna do here's a cg ball here's a here's a cue ball with with some little legs and i was like well that's not gonna work i, I at first i didn't like digital i thought i don't know that this can do anything so yeah. but when we got to uh i remember the explanation of how you somebody had done a, sur a surface water program where it rippled mm -hmm. it's like and so that's on that's in a that's in a volume that's a flat volume and so you're in a space that has all these points and you could rotate that yep or you can also roll it in a tube mm -hmm. okay so and you could light it now you have a tube of water yeah and uh this was uh presented by ilm to do that there's 16 shots and it's like and jim said well if it doesn't work i don't you know we were afraid it was the big fear would, it would look plastic because this was still the first. Yeah. So it wasn't, it was created digitally, but optically composited. I don't know if any of your viewers will understand that, but it was an element created on the computer. Right. And then split in half and, and, and sort of layered so you could see through it. Yep. But it was a chrome element. Okay. The first look at it looked like liquid mercury. Right. And they had yeah. to take that shine off. Yep. Which became Terminator 2. But yeah, I'll get to it. they went right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, when he, yeah, in Terminator 2, when he pours in the helicopter, that's what, it, that's what the water that's suit. That's what that was, okay. right, yeah. Fantastic. But, and then they had awesome. to make it look transparent and liquid, and it did, and it still holds up. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. That was the first time anybody had made an element or something digital really look photographic and realistic. And I still look at it and go, what? Weird, it still holds up. I mean, there wasn't enough. There wasn't enough uh, computer space to hold the data that it took to make that one element. Right. So every time they got a shot done, they would delete the element. Yeah. They would dump it and then start over. So there's no going back. Right. It was. Wow. It was what it was. Yeah. Okay. There's no okay. digital storage. Wow. So, uh, yeah. If you might, we got. We got. I'm shooting this. Second, you'll you'll laugh at who's uh, you can see that you see who the presenters were. Yep, you got Chevy Chase, you got Dan Aykroyd. Yep. Oh wow. And this wow. the but from the Ghostbusters. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's fantastic. That's amazing. But I got my Oscar. We got our Oscars from them on the stage. That's so cool. Oh, that's Funny. awesome. So. Um, that immediately applied to Terminator 2. Yeah, that's that's I remember our, Jim saying, well, yeah. what do we do? How do we do Terminator? So there were, we had I basically storyboarded and it was up on the wall and it goes, I said, well, remember, I said, how are we going to do this? You know, 
this guy coming out of the fire. And it's like, I said, I mean, maybe, maybe we should make him gold. I said, well, then he'd look like a, wa- a walking Oscar. You know, no, no, you can't do that. Um, but Chrome, and I said, remember the first element out of when in the, out of the computer, the first time we tried to do this reflective surface is, 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 is Chrome. And he goes, yeah, but you think we can do 41 shots? That's how many shots there are. Mm. And two of this liquid yeah. guy yeah and and then ilm had to build up the ilm digital department in order to do it yeah so that so we sort of kicked off i like to say we helped build the the digital uh, absolutely yeah that everybody uses today As, of course absolutely just, just one yeah. blockbuster that's what i'm saying Land, next, well right? not just blockbuster <laughs> landmarks that's yeah. that that was my point was earlier wow. it's, it's, it's landmarks and wow. the fact that you were there at each of those steps was fantastic. Yeah, T2 and the Abyss were two of the reasons right. why I, I started doing 3D animation because it's like, I'm like, this is what I want to do, you know? It's like, yeah, it, you know, for someone like me, it like really sparked my creative and anima- and, and, and imagination. And so I'm, you know, it's so exciting to, to yeah. you know, talk to talk to you who's in it and doing it and help create those things. Um, I mean, look, then you, then you worked on T2 3D at Universal, right? You got the director. Yeah, I, uh, Jim asked me to. It, yeah, he was. We're in the middle of a lot of stuff, and he was writing Titanic and other things. But yeah. um, he asked me if, if I would be interested in co co directing because it would, you know, it, it was a. I think it's only well only it was a twelve minute sequence, but it's in the middle of of, of uh, Future War. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Only, uh, only in the middle of a future war, it's fine. Yeah, <laughs> and had to be 3D. Yeah, yeah. oh. Had to and be. 3D, at the time, it was 65 millimeter. We wanted to do it 65 millimeter cameras. Wow. Um, and all the all the testing that we'd ever done, because Boss Film was a 65 oh. millimeter house. Uh, ILM was VistaVision. Yeah. But Doug Trumbull always used... Uh, a 65 millimeter, 70 millimeter, and and he had show scan. He had a n- number of things. So we had the equipment was was uh, 65 millimeter cameras, and I knew them. I knew I knew I knew lenses and all this. Stuff. So yeah. okay. so we had to use two cameras in a beam splitter scenario. Yeah. Like there's a camera looking this way, and there's a there's a plate of glass that and a camera here, and it's splitting the image through mm-hmm. once, reflecting once. So you're getting it an offset image slightly off the eye, eye width right. give you this 3D look, and uh, which is the way the system still work today. Yeah. And, and um, uh, Jim and Vince Pace system. Um, but the, uh, yeah, T2 3D was okay. <laughs> Just uh, okay? <laughs> yeah, like how do we, well, you know, he says uh, you, need to, you need to go look you know, find a place to shoot it. So we, we had we had shot this in the the Terminator Two was that was at a steel mill that was being taken down, mm-hmm. and it's gone. So it was in Fontana. That was gone by yeah. this time. It's like okay. In fact, it was sold to the Chinese. Um, the uh, says, but there's a mineral. There's an ore mineral ore plant in uh, eighty miles away that supplied uh, the material for this the steel mill in Eagle Mountain in Blythe. So I went there, and they're knocking this again. They're knocking, knocking down. It down yeah. And it's like, wow, it looks like a bomb went off. Yeah. Yeah. And, that and, works, and, right? And so, so, we'll, so then we had to, once that was, they said, okay, we, we'll use this. And we had to make a path through it. So I had to, you know, we had done very detailed storyboards and designs, path through it. Um, where the cameras would actually not jiggle and we had to pave it. Oh. And so all that was really well yeah. thought yeah. thought through. And, uh, and then there was one other location inside a collapsed uh, parking structure that uh, we all we all ended up there. Yeah. And, and uh, that was on a stage in, in Hollywood. But but the sections of that was, you know, Stan Winston did the Terminator robots. Mm-hmm. I did all this other action stuff, and Jim, Jim, you know, came in to do Arnold. Yeah. And and but he was still uh, writing. 
So, you know, I kept we kept extending what we had to do. <laughs> yeah. What I had to do. And then uh, I did you can see it up there. The biggest explosion ever put on film. Oh, yeah, we can't see it. It's too low, but that's okay. Oh, there it is. Oh, there. <laughs> Fantastic, yeah. And uh, they were being attacked, these guys on the motorcycle. And that, that, was, that had to be worked out with the real stunt people driving down the set and all this, oh. you know, explosive uh, set ready to go. Yeah. And... We had everybody lined up, all the people that, that was basically somebody would press a button and mm -hmm. said, nobody can do anything until you see them go by. Yeah. So everybody had a booth and they were look, looking out of a hole. And when they saw the motorcycle go by, they could press their button and blow wow. something, and blow up, something behind up behind them. But it was all in camera. That's great. That's and, awesome. Uh, and uh, it's still pretty impressive. Oh, yeah. But anyway, that, that was a, that was Fun. That was yeah, yeah. I saw that back in the day. <laughs> I, I, you could was, only see it at Universal Studio. Yeah, and, I had gone yeah. there and I. And I, I, and I was, yeah. That was like the one thing I wanted to do when I went yeah. there. <laughs> I was a young and I saw that. I was like, I gotta, I gotta see this show because again, you know, obviously T two, you know, again, yeah. very influential for me. Um, I mean, John, we could. We yeah. I there, mean, there's I mean, there's so many things. Titanic and Avatar. And, and Avatar, especially Avatar. Yeah, you I, know, I go on Titanic. The, so. Yeah, the we saw the thing. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. There. <laughs> yeah, right. This, the, true the, lies. The, we blew up the bridge. Oh, right. True lies. True. Oh, you yeah. now. Hold. Let me ask you this. Model. You. Wow. You. You acted in True Lies, didn't you? Oh, I'm the. I'm the janitor. <laughs> You're the janitor. Yeah. <laughs> I saw that. <laughs> yeah. That was my punish. That was my punishment. That was your punishment. Oh, wow. Why was it your punishment? <laughs> Jim said, "Because I story again. I storyboarded this yeah, stuff. Yeah. And I was done clip. I was working on cliffhanger, and Jim was right finishing yeah. True Lies." Yeah, and oh and he called me and he said, uh, you know, uh, I need to work out something, in, but I we need to work figure out how we're gonna do this this jet thing. If I so I was storyboarding at night for him, and and uh, when that fin it finally went, uh, it was like, okay, um, how are we gonna you know the bridge? How do we do that? It's mm -hmm. like, well, that's gotta be in camera again, yeah. quarter scale. Uh, we shot that at Marathon Key in Florida Keys. Yeah. Very shallow area, but it's all in camera. And the light, real light, it's all there. Wow. Um, and, uh, and then the jet on the roof, uh, I, I had a, there was a sequence. I just started, okay, okay they're getting a big fist fight. And in, cliff, in Cliffhanger, at Stallone, we did that hanging on an actual cliff in right. Marmalada in, in uh, Italian Alps. And they were they physically had a you know set guys had a fight. They were cabled to the wall, but they they you know they're fighting. So, so I think I think Arnold and, and our and our bad guy should get in a fist fight. And uh, and how we do that? So I story I did a bunch of sketches and and he goes, wait a minute, like you know it's like he's got a gun and he's slamming his hand against the the cockpit instruments and. And rockets are launching, and guns are firing, and it's doing, and it's shooting up Miami. And he goes, "Wait a minute! He's the good guy. He's doing more damage than the bad guy." I, th I think I had a, a, a target, a target store, and a missile goes through the target. Yeah. But but uh, he goes, "No, we can't. We can't do. They got to simplify it." So, but I did. The one thing that remained was um, this janitor. I had, I had a guy, you know, watching this stuff go on. Or yeah. Was aware of it. And the jets behind, you know, out the window, spinning around, and shooting. Yeah. <laughs> so he goes. Well, the day we got to that, well, the the week of getting to that sequence, we were in Van Nuys in, in a big hangar. He said, "You're the janitor. So I want you to go up and you know go go to the costume and makeup and be a Cuban jam janitor." <laughs> and I think the idea was that it probably wouldn't be in. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But it's a I great scene. But I'm gonna use this, so whatever. Let's see. Yeah. So I, I dyed. We dyed my hair really black, and, and I was really I put on a lot of tan makeup, and had some Cuban cigars in my pocket. And I was listening to Conga. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, what's her name? The uh, uh, Gloria the, Stefan. Right? Gloria Stefan. Mm -hmm. I was listening to that, and <laughs> and uh, vacuum. And when that jet came through the. Through, through the window, I mean, it collapsed the scene. I was, wasn't looking at it. Yeah. It just came, 
just collapsed. And it was on a big, big tr- uh, truck rammed it into the set. <laughs> um, and it, it stayed in there. Yeah. So yeah. It got some laughs. As long as it oh, got a laugh. Absolutely. Oh, it, was, it, was, it was one of the best sequences. It, yeah, it was fantastic. And it worked well, so well with the movie, too, because yeah. the, movie, the movie was it, hilarious it, it and action packed. Possible. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It was, that, that was so great. That was absolutely great. Right. Um, I mean, John. They're, they're, I mean, we've been talking over an hour. Yeah, we've and been talking a while. Right? There, there's so much we want to ask you. I mean, and, and you worked on Avatar, and um, are you working on any of the sequels with with uh, Mr. Cameron at all? Uh, no, I just talked to him yesterday. Well, today's his birthday. Oh, wow, how cool! Yesterday's his birthday. Yesterday, uh, happy birthday, Jim Cameron. But, but uh, <laughs> uh, <coughs> um. No, I've been I've been down to the set a lot, and, and but what I what I am doing is a uh, a document. I I did his doc uh, deep sea challenge, right? Yeah, Do Mariana Trench. Yeah, and I've been on the uh, on the uh, um, that. I've been on the, the dives. Sub, yeah. with, um, let's see that up there. Yeah, there it is. I was in Mir Two on movie Titanic, wow. so. Um, when I worked on Titanic, it was actually in. This, Jim got into. Am I a deep sea explorer or a filmmaker? But <laughs> his his, in, his remarkable interest about the ocean uh, got me. I got all caught up in it. So oh. so I made I made four dives to the Titanic. I've been on the deck four times. Wow. Uh, and two dives with Bill Paxton for Ghost of the Abyss, which is a. Uh, and then I I, I co-directed. Um, the uh, deep sea challenge where he dove to the bottom of Mariana Trench. Wow! And uh, and we were at sea for three months in Papua New Guinea and all. Was, so wow. so currently, I'm now doing a documentary. Um, I just got back from Cuba. Friday. I'm going yeah, last back. week, right? Yeah. First, I'm going back. Oh. Yeah. Next Wednesday, um, we're filming uh, this this uh, free diver named Pepin Ferreras, and he. He's known. He wrote a book called *The Dive*, which uh, Lightstorm Jim has bought the rights to. But I'm doing the documentary, and uh, we already shot his world record uh, attempt. Uh, well, uh, he actually did it, not attempt. Um, in July, shot that. He did it July 20, and so we we were uh, we filmed that underwater. I did, and we're back, and now we're shooting the live action. He's from Cuba. And uh, but the story of his, his it's about his 22 world records and this tragedy of his wife uh, Audrey who died attempting oh, one of these oh, really oh. deep like almost 600 foot oh, you hold your wow. breath and go and up uh, and that's the book that uh, the rights to that oh. story was purchased by Lightstorm. Oh wow! So. Okay. Um, so that's on the that's a that's that's coming. We're going to be able to see that. Oh, I'm shooting that right now. And that's yeah. a doc. That's a documentary. Okay. Awesome. Well, that'll be very interesting to awesome. see. Though fantastic. Yeah. Um, well, I'll tell you what. Um, I did not front. <laughs> well, that's a good. That's a, a perfect segue back because uh, one last question for you, uh, bringing it back to Nosferatu. Yeah. Um, what was what was the your your favorite uh, visual effect that you've uh, ever created just in general not even just Nosferatu just maybe in general okay of everything that you've that you've worked on what's like that favorite uh, maybe most proudest um, uh, scene or set or visual effect that you ever created in uh, in your career in your career yeah uh, well that's too many um, I'm sure <laughs> name 10 yeah <laughs> <laughs> well in Nosferatu yeah mm-hmm. I think I mentioned it's a shot that probably no one noticed it's 106 was uh, Vic is sitting in the doctor's office. Oh, time, time, time lapse. The time, time lapse. lapse. Yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, oh, we noticed. That, Don't worry, we noticed. <laughs> no, that was that was hell. I mean, there was number one. We had to shoot. You know, shooting that in a in a production schedule. Mm. There was really a lot. You know, people they were going crazy. It's like there's no other way to shoot this. It's a, it's on a track. It's a motion control. It's a boom arm. Uh, same system we use back in True Lies, mm-hmm. um, and uh, that, that might have been the same motion control system, but it was the same stop motion guy, my friend Les Bernstein. Oh. He came with the, 
the, our motion control system. Each one of those, the, the idea was that as she's sitting on a doctor's table, or you know, being being examined by a lot of people, and it's yeah. supposed to be a two-hour, three-hour event happening in 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 one minute, right, or less, less than a minute, and and uh, so people are prodding her, poking her, looking in her eye, looking in her ear, taking her blood pressure, taking blood, um, and talking to her the whole time. And so I think it's a, she's in real time. Yeah. yeah. And so we had to schedule it where she's there. We do that in real time. She leaves and start, you know, on this and then starts doing other scenes of the, right. of the, mm -hmm. of the show. And so there's, we're in the middle of all these other stages that, you know, and they're going from stage to stage while we're still shooting. Yeah, yeah. We shot, we started at 10 in the morning, and I think we finished at 9 at night. Wow. And and, uh, and I had, I think, uh, 15 extras. And um, so the idea to get them to blur and move really quickly during the same move, yeah. and wherever they are in this move, in front of the camera, 20 feet from the camera, behind the camera, mm -hmm. um, had to be planned out. And they moved at one and one half frame. Well, was, and they were exposed at one and a half frames a second. And they moved at sometimes quarter speed or half speed. Oh, whatever wow. They needed to do something so they looked like they were. And we had no idea what it was going to look like. <laughs> oh, no. I mean, we had an idea. Yeah, the the theory, right, the theory behind it, right. Other cast, we'd seen other this effect done before, but right. what we were doing, mm. each each person, each pass was 15 minutes. Wow. And we just kept putting people, picking up stuff, and you're going to grab this here, and you're going to touch her here, you're going to hold her wrist and take her, and you have to, we have to slow it way down for you. And, and, uh, I don't know. It just worked. I think it worked because there's so many people. Yeah, but yeah. what's what's yeah. what's good about is is at Ashley sitting there on the ta on the table, looks at people at the right time. Yeah. If you watch this, but mm -hmm. that was really difficult. It really probably went by most people. Um, that's my, you know, because it was so hard and there was so much complaining about it <laughs> while we were shooting. Uh, uh, you know, where are you going to be done? It's like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. I strike the set. It's not tonight. You're not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, uh, yeah, there's that, uh, of course, um, some of the, some of the in Terminator two, um, catch, I came up with a gag where he catches, he comes out of the building and mm -hmm. catches the helicopter. Yeah. And, into the helicopter that's one of my favorite shots it just goes and he says get out yeah um that's great i'm sure there's plenty uh, uh there's um true lies is just the bridge shot yeah uh, ghostbusters the marshmallow man which i didn't think you know we're still talking about it so i gotta say at the time, I wasn't so sure that would I just. It's I thought iconic. it was funny. I didn't yeah. know if anyone else thought it was funny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's hard. It's hard to go it's, go through yeah. all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure you, you know they all have their their place, but exactly. Listen, exactly. that you you, I get, we got to thank you so much for for talking with us and taking yes, the time, especially time. in between yep. you you traveling and everything. We really do appreciate your time, um, and as and and your work as well. Uh, Nosferatu is a fantastic show. Uh, we're very happy to have met you and, and to find out more about that stuff. Uh, any word on season two yet? <laughs> oh, they're, they're writing. Oh, there's a season two for sure. Yeah, no, it's being written. Great. Fantastic. That's yeah, it's, it's so to great that. to hear. I know that because I keep talking to Jamie. <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Maybe maybe after season two hits, we can have you come back and you can talk more about what whatever zany what stuff you're going to make up yeah. in there, right? Yeah. That'll be fantastic. But um, Cool. That's it. So, John, thank you so much. Thanks, we, we, we absolutely appreciate you. John, um, can anyone uh, any can anyone follow you on in, uh, social media, Instagram, Twitter, anyone you want to shout out on that? Or, You know, I haven't, I haven't set that up. I, everybody says, like, why not? Why don't you do that? And so I think I will. Okay. I'll, I'll set myself up on Absolutely. Instagram. Whenever when that whenever that comes out, we'll 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 shout it out to people so we can get get you those followers and and you know just so they can see your work. It, it's it's useful in that it's fun to share 
we use it as a way to share yeah. you know cool things yeah. and you know and and, and yep. uh, you know you've got plenty of cool things especially to promote your new documentary and everything because it's it's absolutely fantastic what you're doing right now so you know absolutely let people know about it you know um all right so that'll do it again right. thank you very much Thanks, for, for, for coming, coming on. on we absolutely appreciate your time all right man thank you guys okay right. have a great week. Thanks.